Hello, my name is John Brez and I am the co-author of the books Old Ireland in Colour and Old Ireland in Colour 2 with Dr. Sarah Ann Buckley and a professor at NY Galway. I want to talk a little bit today about the background to one of the pictures which features in our second book, that is of the second oil, and to give some context about how the colours were arrived at. And I'm just going to start by showing you a, a similar image which is in the National Library of Ireland. Actually, there are three images from the um, second oil that were taken as glass plate negatives by a photographer called Brendan Kiel. And this is one of them. Now actually in this particular picture it's flipped the other way around and you'll note this because if you zoom in on the picture you'll see that it says um, Lord Mayor just reversed and the, the red hand is the wrong way around as well. So um, it's a fascinating picture with so many people and I think maybe because of today's COVID restrictions having so many people in one place is uh, again a kind of a site that we're not used to. But um, as I said this is one of three negatives the one we've colorized in the book is actually the first of the three negatives. They are labeled KE219, 220 and uh, 221. And um, actually sometimes incorrectly um, you, you may find this referred to as the, uh, as the first doyle, but it's actually the second uh, doyle sitting from, as I said, August 1921. So I want to talk a little bit, I suppose, about some of the um, features in this picture and how we went about colorizing them. So the first step in the colorization process is we use a system called the Oldify. The Oldify is an artificial intelligence system developed by Jason Antic and Dana Kelly in San Diego. And um, with the Oldify, there are a number of models available where essentially it's been trained or has learned from different banks of black and white to color images that are mapped uh, one to the other. And within uh, the Oldify, we basically get that base level of the colorization that we require for our um, uh, our work. So uh, here is a uh, portion of the second oil image that we were working on. And you can see that the old device has given a very good base version in terms of colorization for us to work with. Now, there are some elements that need to be uh, fixed here. There are some faces that haven't been colored in. There are some clothes that are actually, actually a lot of the clothes come out of this kind of purpley bluey color. And because of the amount of detail on this image, there is quite a lot of things to be um, manually adjusted. And I'm using this platform, which is Photoshop, a very well-known platform for photo editing to do that. Now, I also make use of a number of models from uh, the Oldify, not just on the My Heritage um, in Color service, which is a commercial service powered by the Oldify, but also another one called Colorize Images. And through a combination of models from the Oldify and Colorize Images, I combine these in different uh, levels to get a desired outcome. Now, one of the inspirations for um, the colorization of, of the second oil picture are the various paintings that have preceded it. And there are two main paintings. One is uh, from Thomas Ryan, and it is visible in the um, Houses of the Oireachtas. And the second is a painting by Norman Teeling. And I'm just going to show you these now as well. So this is the painting by Thomas Ryan. Thomas Ryan uh, sadly recently passed away. He was a very well-known painter and this particular painting, as I mentioned, uh, hangs in the Doyle. So it's of the uh, scene in the round room of the mansion house. And indeed you can see a uh, great color used here from the incandescent lights to the red drapes to the green tablecloth. So this is one of the uh, images that served as inspiration for our colorization. Um, the second image was one from Norman Teeling. And again, we see a, a great view here of the second oil. We can see the red drapes, we can see the, the yellow um, light. Um, so both Teeling and Ryan were born after this actually occurred. Uh, Ryan was born in 1929, I believe, and Teeling in 1944. So they were obviously using their own references in terms of the colors used for this picture. And uh, we, we have done the same. So I'm going to start by just saying a little bit about some of the items you can see in the background and then how we came up with the colors photos. So this is a portion of the original black and white image of KE219. And you can see here in the center of the photograph, we have Michael Collins sitting beside Arthur Griffith in the sofa. And beside him is Eamon de Valera reading something from some paper. 
Um, and on the days we have um, Old McNeil, who is the Cahirlock. And you can see various characters here in the photograph, some Capuchin monks, there's a priest. Um, in fact, there's quite a number of priests in this picture. Um, we have uh, Constance Markovich. There's many of the later presidents of Ireland seen, can be seen in this photograph. An uh, amazing detail in this picture. And actually, to find out some of the names, there is a, another great photograph on the National Library of Ireland, which is, again, from the same session. And actually, it's a scan of a picture from the Irish press. And in this picture, you can see actually the names of those attending. So again, a who's who in um, Irish politics at the time. Um, so then we bring this uh, photograph into, as I said, into Deoldify. And then after that, we apply manual colorization to the various scenes in that photograph. So I'm going to just show you um, the colorized version. And here it is. So we have um, a, again, the, the, the detail is just amazing in, the, in this original photograph. So we use various um, known clothes colors at the time. Uh, so, you know, people typically wore combinations of brown colors, grays, blacks, blues, and so on. And we would have chosen various variations of those for the people in, in the crowd. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier on, the paintings by Ryan and Teeling served as inspiration for the drapes in the background for the tablecloth. So in the gallery in this picture, you'll see that there are a number of portrait paintings. And these paintings are of various Lord Mayors of Dublin. There's about 10 paintings around the, uh, around the gallery area. And we went through each of these paintings to try and figure out who they were so that we could use the appropriate colors for those portraits. Um, secondly, behind the portrait paintings, you see that there are actually a number of coats of arms. And again, the coats of arms correspond to various Lord Mayors of Dublin. And we went through all of these coats of arms to figure out who they were, what were the correct colors that should have been used to be able to add the appropriate colors to this picture. In the foreground, you see that there are a number of plaster cast statues. Three of these are actually three of a set of four um, that are, were cast from a statue of um, Prince Albert. And at the plinth of that statue, there were four figures representing science, which is on the, the, the left here, uh, science showing holding a telescope. And actually under the person's foot, there is an old style camera. And we have industry over in the middle holding a metal bar on top of an anvil. And then over here on the right, there is um, art and the artist holding their portfolio. The statue or the plaster cast of the statue of agriculture is not visible in this picture. Um, the only other portrait that isn't of a Dublin Lord Mayor is the one in the center here, which is of Parnell, just behind the day where the uh, chairperson is sitting. So in relation to the portrait paintings, one very useful resource I found was a book called the Dublin Civic Portrait Collection by Mary Clark. And I bought this from uh, Castle Bookshop Mail. And actually, if, if you look at the cover, we have uh, Daniel O'Connell featured here. And Daniel actually was one of the Lord Mayors of Dublin featured in these portraits at the back. And again, working uh, our way from left to right in terms of the portraits, the first one visible is that of Charles Thorpe. And Charles Thorpe was the Lord Mayor of Dublin from 1800 to 1801. And indeed, we were able to use the colors in this picture to help us to colorize the portrait of Thorpe visible here on the gallery. And subsequently, all the other mayors um, shown in sequence, um, we were able to find the portraits for those in this really fantastic book. So um, that was, again, extremely useful in terms of the colors for the portrait paintings. The other aspect was the coats of arms that are visible, either partially obscured or fully visible um, around the gallery as well. And again, there's a sequence of pictures here, which is in order of the Lord Mayors. And I've written the names in here for the ones that I was able to find. And again, there were some very useful resources I was able to make use of. One of those was a blog post on a Irish heraldry um, blog, and it was from 2016, from five years ago. But basically it was photographs of the Lord Mayor's coats of arms dating back to Daniel O'Connell and all of the Lord Mayor's um, after that. And again, because these were in sequence and they actually roughly corresponded to the order of those shown in the photograph, I was able to match up the colors um, from this blog post to those in the picture. So you can see joint, Carol, Purden and so on. There are three actually of the, um, the, uh, the, the mares you can see here, joint, Carol and Purton. So we're able to match up those colors 
to the various portions or partially visible coats of arms here as well. And working our way through them again, as you move to the right, some of these are more visible and more detail is um, it can be seen. And we were able to match those up again to coats of arms for those various um, surnames. Sometimes you might have one or two coats of arms that would be available for a particular surname. So you would be looking for the one that, try that matched this um, as closely as possible. So again, a great amount of detail here. Also, I suppose useful was another photograph which was in the National Library of Ireland. And that was um, this one, which uh, is of a another picture of the um, the mansion house. Let me just load it up here for you so you can see it. So here it is. It's it's a it's a picture from the mansion house round room. It's from the Easton collection in the National Library of Ireland. So it's a bit later than I, I believe it's a bit later than than the one we've just seen. But again, up here you can see the coats of arms, and because I could see them here in sequence, I was able to line those up to the ones that were partially visible in the second oil picture and then figure out what order they were in and use that then as well in terms of um, understanding um, what color should be used. And actually we could probably figure out when this picture is from because it has the name of the mayor um, at the time there. It says Alfred Byrne, TD Mayor. So that must be an indicator of the date of this picture. Um, and then the last resource I was able to use was a list of the mayors of Dublin, which was uh, again, just publicly available on, on Wikipedia. And again, I was able to cross-reference this with a list of the paintings and with the coats of arms to try and figure out what sequence they were in. So that's it from behind the scenes. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit behind the work that goes into each photograph in Old Ireland Colour 2. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.